ハッチケイさんおなんだおい俺も出るのか聞いてないぞ Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Zephonix channel. Today, we are going to be reviewing the Robot Spirit or Robot Dama Machine, the Aegis. And this time, the box is a little, little larger than the、uh, Vizago and the Duke Gundam. And you know, let's turn around the back. And then, you know, we have weapon introduction, pose and proper pose, and articulation.、Uh, if you ask me, why the box looks so broken? Because You have to know if you're buying a brand new Robot a m a c h i n e it's gonna be freaking expensive. And I don't have that kind of money, okay? I don't have that kind of money. So that's why I'm buying secondhand all your Robot a m a c h i n e that I'll be reviewing for the next couple of years or potentially my whole life is gonna be secondhanded because I don't, I seriously don't have the money to buy firsthand, okay? And then now, you know, without talking too much, let's open the box straight away. So, you know, after we open the box, we can see the actual MS and the instruction menu. So, let's start with the instruction menu. So, this is how you're gonna take it out weapons. And then we have、uh, this, the action base. And then the. What's that called? The. The weapons. And oh, and by the way, I, before I start a review, I have to warn you guys. You know, if you. If you know the Aegis, you know the Aegis is very famous of what、uh, transformation, right? But unfortunately, on this Aegis,、uh, this Robot Damage Aegis, it is non transformable. So, sorry to, sorry to inform you that, but if you really want to do transformation, just buy MG or XG, they both do the same thing. But unfortunately, the Robot Damage version, they don't provide transformation. But anyway, we can open the box up first. And then, first, we can see actually, I kind of missed it here. So, at the side here, there's the action base sticking at the bottom of the at the bottom of the bottom box. Okay, so now let's just take out one by one and you know, kind of look at it first. So, this is the beam rival. And then, as you can see, there's two different positions for you to for the handles. And then, you know, very close, very, and the scope is actually painted. That's great. The scope is painted. You know, it's not really. Oh, wait, actually, they didn't quite paint it. It's very hard to see the difference. As you can see, the outside is a gray part and the inner part is a silver part. So it's very hard to notice there's any difference or not. <coughs> Excuse me. And then next up, what we got? We got the, we got the beam, the, the blade, the beam blades for the actual. For the feet part and the arms part as well. So I assume the short one will be the will be the a r、uh, will be the feet part and this long blade is gonna be the arms part. That's just my assumption. And then we got the shield. The shield here, as you can see, is beautifully painted and it looks way better than XG, obviously. And then we have the backpack here. The backpack here, we can see very stable movements on the wings, on the top. And on the bottom as well. And then we can see those clear color separation. If you look at the side here, look at the side here, we can see this clear color separation. That's great. And then we have a lot of options hand down here. So we're just g o n n a pick that up and show you guys. So we got the fist hand, we got the the、um, the weapon holding hand, and the extended hand as well. And then now let's take out the actual product and take a look at it. So First impression,、uh, I got a bingo on my Aegis. So the right skirt armor here is too sloppy. Meanwhile, the left side is completely fine. I got a little bingo on this thing right here. The head is completely fine. Torso is fine. The arms is fine. Legs are fine.、Uh, it looks like my only bingo is the. Looks like my little only bingo is at this skirt armor, though. Yep. Anyways. Anyways, you know, it. it's already a quick, quick feel of the g a m b l e r So, why don't we just get to the re review part and we'll see the details about it? All right, before we jump into the articulation introduction, let's just take a you know, take a quick look of the details on this. So, first, let's talk at the head. The head,、uh, personally, 
it um, reshapes from the anime, so it might look like uh, anime accurate. Although I feel like the gap, the gap in the eyes is a little too small, and it's very hard to see the eyes. As you can see here, I'm putting it under the sun, and you can barely see the eyes. Uh, the the color separation on it though, I like it very much because, um, you know, they they did give you this small great detail at the side of the head, and as you can see, and then the the paint on the the paint on the head though is a little off, unfortunately, as you can see right here, the the top here, the top blue is very clear. Meanwhile, the the antennas blue part here is starting to have some color off so i do get a little little bangles on this um, down plot and then as you can see right here so the middle torso is two joints so you can move it very freely um the the feeling of it is a little bit sloppy but i think we can handle about it and then you know look at the arms first so the arms um, it's not like really exciting or anything, although the painting is looking a bit nice as you can see here It got a little bit of metallic metallic feeling and then now but the part is I do have some bangles on the shoulders as you can see the shoulders is not sanding completely and there's a still a little white on it and yeah, that's the part that is kind of damaging it. And then now we look at the arms. I think the arms are, uh, are fine and then you know the part here is just you have to remove it because if you want to put the beam savers in you're gonna need to remove the parts from there uh, overall the painting on the arms i think is completely fine i don't see there's any flaws or something like that and then we look at the side side skirt here as i said in the intro the right side the right side skirt <clears throat> i did hit a jackpot so that's why it's slopping uh the backpack is completely fine i think it's yeah it's completely fine and then we look at the legs the legs here uh very clear color separation and even on the at, at the bottom of the feet this time um i think they can do a little more color separation because now right now we can see some very basic color separation but uh, i think that's fine overall the overall this time compared to the last two robo damage i think i got a little bit more flaws than the last two this one uh the colors start uh, falling off and then you know it's not sanding completely and I even got a little bingo at the side skirt here so I think you know <clears throat> it's not it's not really a big deal because I'm not gonna throw it away anyway yeah like well it's the details on it is good I at least they give you kind of kind of like a small color separation on the thrusters and I very admire it like if you take a look at the if you take a look at the torso they even give you the torso color separation for you but overall my my first impression about this uh, robot damage is it is a a rescaled and I personally think it looks way better than the XG version now the whole scale looks a little bit more look like a 1 to 144 scale uh, Gampla because you know if you really know the old version it looks very kind of very bulky and I kind of like this kind of slim design though How about we just take a quick look of the articulation so first head move up and down and then you know You can move it side to side as well. There's an extra joint on the leg So there's an extra extra joint on the neck so you can move front and back and then now the arms are 360 no problem at all. You can lift up the whole arm. You can lift up the whole uh, the shoulder piece of the individual uh, Bend up 180 of course and then you can you know twist the twist the hand down there no problem at all unfortunately the back the back of the arm is not movable because uh you're gonna have to change the the parts there to you know uh remake the anime scene where the aegis got the beam savers out from the hand and then now we look at the side skirt the side skirt is a very good movement though it actually and then the legs movement kick to the side kick to the front oh actually the kick to the front is pretty impressive for this angle and then you know to the back not really um bending bending is absolutely amazing Okay, how about we take a look at the feet? We take a look at the feet. The feet is a ball joint, so you can simply go slightly side to side, slightly front and back. And then we got this little piece of armor about the feet. Uh, it is a ball joint, but it's, but it's quite tight for a ball joint. And you know, the front skirt, it can move up and down, and then you can, it's a ball joint, so please be careful when you're playing with it. The waist part though, the waist part, I think they overdone it. I know they, I understand they try to make more movement, so that's why they give us a one, two, three, three joints on the waist. But the problem is, uh, 
we got too many joints and it, it's very hard to reattach it and secondly it feels really sloppy after I play with a couple play with it a couple times and yeah that's just basically it and then the backpack of course as the intro said it can move up and down on on both on both of the wings so I think the articulation on this thing is pretty good it's just that it's just that maybe mine is maybe mine is a second hand so that's why I got a little bit of problem on this on this kit but I think it's quite acceptable because you know robot amishi is just something that you you mess around with for the poses and then you put it back to the shelf so I don't think that's a big deal I think uh, it, it is pretty fine for me right now so how about we move on to the accessory part first let's take a look of the rival first so the rival looks like this as you can see in the intro and i do realize that is not a silver paint that is actually the blue paint but it's stuck but the color start fading away so that is why i can't even define it is a a uh, blue paint right there so as you can see here there's two joints on the rival so you can f just move it around like this this is the normal handle if you want to put it on the weapon hands uh, you do it on this side and this side what does it do so you can actually store it on the side skirt there's a there's a little joint here all you have to do is just you have to face it and then you push it down if i can find a joint the joint is not quite tight so i would suggest you just um don't do this is it's not it's not tight it's not tight and it's very easy to pop out let me try it again there we go i pushed it in it you actually need to quite take a quite a bit of strength to push it in in order to keep it steady and then next up we got this shield so the shield as i introduced before but this, this time the shield is remake and it is a pretty good style as you can see now the, the front of the shield is pretty sharp for now and i really like this feel because it's actually worth more and then you know two two parts that you can store on the shield you can actually put it on the side of the arm just like in the anime or you can get the or you can take off this little part here as you can see it's removable and then you put it on the weapon holding hand and you can make the guard and then you can make the kit hold it or in another way they actually provide you another joint that you can put it on the side skirt like this but personally i think this looks a bit weird because normally you don't store the shield on the side of your on your thing but the problem with this kit that i don't like is the part that is they make you a joint to make you like you put it you put the weapons at the side skirt but it's very hard to pull out uh, when I was trying to pull out the beam rival, I took about two minutes just to try to pull it out. It's because it's, it's, it's ridiculously tight. But this time, the shield is easier to pull out. I don't know why. But uh, yeah, you guys figure that out. Um, I'm just going to move on to the next one. How about we introduce the things that you guys waited the most? This is the beam sabers. So yeah, so now you take a look at this. So there's different parts. The part that only with one joint here. The one, the little slide part here is actually for the legs, and the part that have two joints is for the for the arms. So it's pretty easy to store. Let's use it for the legs. So first, you remove this little white piece there, and then you basically just switch it, and then you and then you hear that sound. That means it's in, and then same goes for the arms. So now you pull this part out. Be careful, and then now you remember the, for the arms boy side face down and then you find that you find the joint and then you put it back in again like this and this is basically how you put all the beam savers on the aegis and it's pretty simple and it's you know but this time i definitely have to say though the beam savers color kind of disappoints me and it looks really lame i know i know it's not like a real thing but this beam saber, I think, is a little too dark for the colors, and I don't really like it. It's it's missing the missing the very light yellow color in the anime, and I think this color looks a bit bad. So in this kit, you have four types of hands. First, we got the fist hand already on the kit when uh, you bought it on the, or you receive it and the second one we got is a trigger hand so this trigger hand right here as you can see you got a little pop out spot for the for the beam rifle to go in uh, they they come with a pair so you can switch it so you can switch side if you want the aegis to hold it on the right hand go for it left hand go for it and then next up we got is a normal uh, weapon holding hand so this one is for you to hold the shield 
again, it comes with a pair, but this one mainly focus on uh, holding the shield if you really want to. But personally, I would like the shield stick it at the side of the mobile suit. And then the third option we got is as usual, the ex the open hand or you call it the extended hand. And then, you know, we come it comes a pair of it. The radius of this thing, when it, uh, the open hand, the radius on it is pretty, it's pretty huge. As you can see, it's set, the fingers is separate quite a bit and I pretty like it. And that's, that's basically all the accessory and all the hands option, all the introduction for the Aegis. Now let's do the part that you guys be waiting the most. So we're gonna compare two version between the XG and the Robodamashi version of the Aegis. So first, uh, let me remind you, uh, I will demonstrate the movement on the XG, but may I have to remind you, I built this Aegis like what? five or six years ago. I'm not sure if the, is the joint still available for me to twist around like that. But, but what can I, I can assure you is that we can actually, you know, do some very basic comparison. So first, so first, uh, let's take a look at this. So first, I think the biggest difference is the neck part over here. So if, if I put it closer, the XG, the neck part is pretty you know, pretty easy to find it out. And then we look at the, the RG version, it hidden another RG version, <laughs> the whole Damage version, we can we can see that there's a, we, we don't really see the joint on the neck. And next up, if you look at carefully, comparing the two, uh, comparing the two scales and then comparing to two edges, you can clearly see the XG version got a very large gap between the head and the shoulders and they even don't and they don't really have the uh, and they and the torso is not really you know covering up the the, the neck joint and then now we look at the uh, Robodamashi version now the scale looks a bit comfortable and then you can you know you can you you can't see the neck joint and uh, but the gap between the head and the shoulders is now fixed and actually looks bit better and then now we look at the shoulders so the shoulders uh we can see that the xg version uses a a slightly darker gray and then is is shorter and then now we look at the um <clears throat> and then now we look at the robo damage version we can see that it is look like a metallic gray plus the shoulder is longer and then now overall there's a color difference as well so uh, if you if you take a look closely at the torso part here, so the torso part here for the robot Damage, it is a gray part, but for the uh, X original XG version, it is a navy color. And then now we look at the torso here. Since, but by the way, I have to tell you, XG version and robot Damage version got a very huge difference. Is the uh, robot Damage cannot transform, but the XG one it can. Okay. And then now we're just gonna need to take a look at the waist part. So the waist part is a slight difference. Well, so as you can see, during the part, during it's not transformable for the for the uh, robot energy. So the waist part is completely filled with you know appropriate joints. And then because the HG version have to take care of the transformation part, and they actually added a extra joint here. And then as you can see, half the waist is gone. Okay, half of the waist is gone. And then next up, we can see the uh, the arms is different. So certainly, the arms on the Robot G version is is slimmer, and then the XG version is is slightly larger for the arms and the hands as well. And then now, look at and then now we're gonna need to take a look at the at the waist part. So the waist part here, as you can see, is two different things. So if you look closely, the XG version for the waist. Um, is it is slightly smaller and shorter and then if we look take a look at the robot damage version it is longer than the xg version plus it can move up individually okay now <clears throat> now next up we're gonna look at the side skirt so the side skirt here let me lift up the arm just to let you see so the side skirt here as you can see pretty well color separated we can see that that's the navy color the white the the, you know, slightly like pinky color is getting together, and then we can see the screws for the joint. And then meanwhile, if we took a look, if we take a look at the uh, normal XG version, the color separation isn't as great as the 
as the Robo Damashi, but it's just a little bit of color. It's just a little color difference. So I don't think that's gonna, you know, take a lot of difference. But what it comes to the difference is the legs here. So the legs here, as you can see, um, the Robo Damashi it is shorter than the HG version. But the legs, the legs is clearly shorter and it actually is more detail on the Robo Damaji. And you can see that that's an extra detail that the XG don't have. And then we can see there's a little bit of silver paint on the bottom of the feet, side of the, uh, side of the legs and then, you know, front of the kneecap armor. And then meanwhile, if we took, if we take a look of the XG version, it doesn't have any kind of details that I mentioned. And the knees, the knee parts just completely missing the details part. But there's a difference is the tip of the feet, which is the where the sword came out of. The XG version is movable. The Robo Namaji version, however, is a fixed piece and you cannot move it. Like, let me show you. So before I can move, but now it's just a complete fixed pieces. But I can't understand why, because, you know, the Robo Damaji is not transformable and is actually just for a you know display purposes so it only gives you the option to switch the blade around instead of giving you the full transformation now we're going to, need to turn to the back and then we're going to need, and then we're going to need, need to see a little bit of difference here so <clears throat> so as you can see here the backpack here uh there's a lot of difference so the xg backpack is there's no gaps. And then for the Robo Damage version, we can clearly see there's a gap at the back. And then now we turn into the side of the mobile suit. And then we can see that the Robo Damage is a is filled with the color separation. As you can see, it's very clear. It's the gray part, the navy part here. And then now we take a look at the original XG. There's no color separation. No. And then and then, you know, extra bits here. We have, we look at the shoulders. The, sh the side of the shoulders for the Robo Davaji is gray. Now we take a look at the XG is nothing. <laughs> okay. And then now there's a, uh, there's another extra bits that is a little bit different. So if we take a look at this, so the XG version, the whole, the whole beam saber thing or the claw thing during the MA mode, it is movable. It is movable. And then now we take a look. And then now we take a look at this. So it is a fixed part for the Robo Damage. You cannot move the blade. Uh, it's pretty sad actually, because in the anime, it's supposed to be, you know, flipping it out and then slash the enemy. But the Robo Damage just missed that part. And I personally think the, I personally think the blade part or the claws part for the legs and the arms, HG doing a better job. But for the overall, painting and then you know scale i think the robot machine is a little bit more comfortable and then and then now we can take a closer look to the head so the back of the head we can see the silver part here and then you know the head here is color separation is pretty good and it's actually look a little bit smaller and then now we look at the xg head so the xg head i personally think I personally think the this time i will give it to robot damage the robot damage head looks a little bit more comfortable and actually there is a shaped difference between the Robo Damage and the XG version. So the XG version is a is you know is sticking together. All the parts are sticking together, and it also don't have a color separation at the back of the head. And then now we look at the Robo Damage head. It does have a little gap between it. So before it was a whole white part for uh, between the antenna and the top of the head, but now this time there's a that's the pink part to do the separation between it. And also the front of the antenna is pink, not yellow. And we can see the antenna, the antenna is different. So the XG version is longer and the R and not the RG. The, the robot damage G version is shorter and sharper. And that's pretty much the comparison. The weapons though, however, I think the only difference is the shield. As I mentioned at the before when I was talking about the accessory, the XG version doesn't have a sharp shield like the Robo Damashi. And that's pretty much the comparison between two of the units. All right, guys, thank you for 
watching my videos. This is the end of the review. Uh, you might ask uh, why you didn't showcase the display base for the Robo Damashi. I'm gonna have to repeat myself again. If you watch my last Robo Damashi review, oh, actually, the, my first ever Robo Damashi review, which is the Du Gundam, I already mentioned that the action base that came along with the Robo Damashi is useless. It cannot even hold the Gampla. It will just fall off instantly. The design of the action base got some problems on it. I seriously think that is like that action base that came with the Robo Damashi box is unreliable. I'd rather just use the normal action base too. You can put it on it anyways. Well, but that's a here's a problem. If you're using an action base too, there is a because there's a part here actually blocking the way. So I will I would recommend you buy an action base five and everything will be fine. Well, but this is pretty much the end of the review. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to drop a like on my videos and subscribe to my channel. And I would say though, Robodamashi, if you have one, please keep it because you know Robodamashi gets more expensive as the time passes because some of them don't even get remade. For example, Aegis, uh, Heavy Arms. Heavy Arms, actually, uh, fun fact, Heavy Arms and the Ultron Gundam from Gundam W and the Blitz Gundam and the uh, Aegis Gundam is actually the uh, like the most expensive robot machine right now, like from the very past stages, because they're very hard to find anymore. And so, if you have a robot machine, ages, or if you're planning on buying one, first you're gonna need to uh, prepare a lot of money to buy one. Second, if you do have one, don't sell it cheap. Don't be that idiot on eBay. Thank you very much, and goodbye.